Welcome to this presentation about automated L2 fluency measurement. Thank you so much for watching this recording and I hope to see you in the symposium and will be very happy to answer your questions and receive your feedback about it. My name is Serge Bibao. I'm from Belgium and Ecuador at Universidad Central del Ecuador, KU Leuven and the University of Louvain. Together with my co-authors, Louis Escoufler, Thomas François and Pete de Smet, who would like to thank for their support, and you can see here their pictures, um, we conducted this study about validating and comparing automated temporal fluency metrics. But first, why? Well, in autonomous language learning apps, if we can elicit speaking from the learners and automatically compute reliable fluency metrics, we, we can have a dynamic, continuous, and especially non-intrusive assessment. We could observe fluency development longitudinally without requiring external tests. And this can benefit both language learning, language teaching, language testing, and also research. So how did we do it? Well, this is actually part of a large experimental study we conducted on the effectiveness of dialogue systems for language learning. Uh, we wanted to measure how much effect dialogue-based autonomous practice could have on fluency. So we measured speaking in an autonomous speech test, we analyzed the results semi-automatically to be able to compare many different metrics and different operationalizations of these metrics. We validated them with their ability to predict proficiency and short-term development uh, sensitivity. Here is the structure of this presentation. First, I'm going to review briefly what we know about fluency and proficiency. Then I'm going to explain uh, our data set and analysis methods. And finally, we'll see what the results say about metrics, pruning, predictive power, and sensitivity. But first, let's quickly review what we already know. This will be brief. Most of you probably already know all this. Feel free to skip it. And there's been so much publications about fluency measurement in the past 20 years that this can only be utterly reductive. But let me try to um, just give you a very brief glimpse of it. L2 fluency is typically divided in cognitive fluency, perceived fluency, and utterance fluency. In this talk, I'm only going to talk about the latter, utterance fluency, or temporal fluency, which is based on the actual speaking performance. Utter fluency is itself frequently considered to include speak, speed fluency, breakdown fluency, and repair fluency. Our first question is, how utterance fluency relates to proficiency? In the literature, it is often compared to perceived fluency, and on this topic, I recommend you to read Suzuki, Kormos, and Uchiara's meta-analysis from this year. Um, but here, we all are only going to look at how fluency can predict or be linked to proficiency. Why only proficiency? Because what we want here is to predict speaking proficiency. Uh, we want also to have a fast initial rating of a learner in cold start situations, for instance, and we want to be able to monitor short-term development in fluency and proficiency. So what fluency metrics are good predictors of proficiency? First, speed fluency, which is the composite of length and time metrics. Well, in general, it has been demonstrated in many studies that speed fluency metrics are good differentiators between fluent and non-fluent speakers, between native and non-native. The best known metric is probably speech rate. That is the number of syllables over the total time. It has been confirmed to be particularly stable and precise, which makes it a good predictor for automatization. Very similar to speech rate is articulation rate, the number of syllables over the phonation time, which has the added advantage of being unconfounded by silent pauses. And very close is syllable duration, which is simply the inverse of the articulation rate. We know from many studies, uh, by Sato and colleagues, for instance, that it is a good differentiator between fluency levels, a good predictor of perceived fluency, and it is relatively sensitive to short-term learning gains. Um, it is the only one of the three to be selected by Segalowitz and colleagues as a core fluency measure, because they consider the other two to be redundant. I'm not sure about that, but we'll see later what our results say about that. 
If we combine speed fluency and breakdown fluency, in other words, length and pauses metrics, we obtain runs, such as length of runs, also called uh, syllable runs, the number of syllables by the number of silent pauses, and duration of runs, or phonation runs, the phonation time divided by the number of pauses. Both are considered to be great proficiency differentiators and sensitive to short-term learning gains, and they are both core fluency measures following Segalowitz. Breakdown fluency itself has its own measures based on pauses over time. The duration of silent pauses, for instance, which might not necessarily differentiate as well following the Young and colleagues, but it's still a, a core fluency measure in Segalowitz. Then there are multiple metrics involving field pauses, but they are often regarded as inadequate to predict proficiency and unrelated to the other fluency metrics. There are also many very interesting metrics linked to the location of pauses, but due to technical limitations in this study, we did not implement any of them. Finally, we have repair fluency, which includes false starts, correction, and repetitions. Well, against popular intuition, repair metrics are actually not good predictors of proficiency, nor do they relate to communicative adequacy or perceived fluency. So we did not include them in this study. And I'm skipping many other metrics here, but we already have something to work with. Now, how did we conduct our study? Well, as I told you, this was part of a larger experimental study. So I'm only mentioning the relevant parts here. We designed a pre-test, post-test study with a very short pedagogical intervention in between, where the young learners practiced autonomously the target language in written dialogues in three sessions of 40 minutes. Now, note that when Segalowitz in 2017 is talking about short-term learning gains, he's talking about five weeks of full-time immersion. Here, we were so ridiculously optimistic that we'd hoped to see some visible fluency gains in only two hours of intervention. But, okay, so in the pre-test and the post-test, the participants took an autonomous speaking test, a computer-delivered interview. This pre-test, post-test difference is going to give us the developmental sensitivity of metrics. In other words, it's going to let us know if some metrics can detect changes from such a short intervention. And how are we actually validating the metrics? We're using a vocabulary size test as a proxy of proficiency, and we are computing correlations against it to compare the predictive power of our fluency metrics. Now, the participants of the study. As I told you, it was a large-scale study. We initially had more than 220 Flemish students of French coming from two regions of Belgium, four different schools and 11 different classes. Because not all of them took part in all sessions, there were some incomplete data in the process and we had to eliminate some of them. So for the correlation analysis, we are only using 164 participants, but that's still a lot, of course. And those are 12 to 13 years old students in second grade in Belgium. 97% are native speakers of Dutch and they are learning French. The target language was French, in which most of them are at an A1, A1 plus level. But there are some outliers uh, with a few students reporting using French at home, being heritage language speakers. So here these outliers are actually welcome because they expand our range of variation. So the first particularity in our study is that the speech test was totally autonomous. The, the students were in a computer lab with their classmates uh, in front of an individual computer with a headset. They had to answer 24 short questions from basic, how are you? That's the one you see on the right, tu vas bien, uh, to build confidence, and two questions targeting specific functions such as, can you describe your French teacher? All the questions were given orally in the headset with the transcription appearing on the screen, as you can see on the right here. After the question finished, the system automatically started recording. Um, the participant had 30 seconds maximum to answer or could click next after they'd finished answering. And of course, 30 seconds were more than enough for all these questions. 
The second particularity in our study is the automated speech analysis. Now, you see that with more than 200 participants, time 24 questions, time two and pre, for pre and post test, that was a lot of speech. We have more than 11,000 audio files. The first thing we did was automating transcription. It was done through the Google Spe Cloud speech to text automated speech recognition service, and it was surprisingly convincing. I'll come to that later. However, we needed to be sure. So Louis, one of my co-authors, uh, revised manually all the transcriptions to, decide, to detect and fix ASR errors. And he also annotated the transcriptions for disfluencies, things like filled pauses, L1 words, false starts, etc. And that's where we are going to use for pruning later. Additionally, we used um, Nivia de Jong's Prat nu syllable nuclei uh, detection script in its recently released third version. The script was used to compute silent pauses and phonation time and to give an alternate count of syllables. But for the main count of syllables, we computed automatically the syllables from the manually reviewed transcript with different pruning alternatives. Um, counting syllables is a task that computers can do very reliably, probably even more than humans, so we had over 99% agreement on those, for those counts. Now, how did we validate our selection of metrics? Well, that's where we used the vocabulary size test as an external proxy of L2 proficiency. You see, vocabulary size has been demonstrated in many different studies to be a quick, yes, but very reliable estimate of L2 proficiency. Most vocabulary size tests are receptive, but reproductive tests have been showing even better correlations with speaking proficiency, close to 0 0.8. Uh, the test we used was a standardized test designed and validated by our colleague Anne-Sophie Norey and was used in previous vocabulary studies. It included 30 words from the first 1000 frequency band, more or less what can be expected at an A1 level. So what have we found? Well, first, let's talk about annotation and estimators. What about our automated estimators? How do they fare in comparison with our manual baseline? The main issue is calculating the number of syllables, because this measure is then used to compute composite fluency metrics. Remember that our reference count here is an automated count of syllables based on a manually revised transcript. How do the automated measures perform? Well, as you can see here, the Google ASR-based transcript is giving results that are quite close to our reference value. The mean absolute error, MAE, you can see in the first column, indicates a mean difference of about one syllable per answer, which are on average between eight and 13 syllables long. So that's a very acceptable accuracy, right? Uh, in terms of predictive power, if you look at the last column, you can see that the number of syllables is already quite predictive of proficiency and that the ASR-based is almost as predictive as the manually revised count. Now, the syllables count from the syllable nuclei Pratt script is a little bit further off. It's differing by four syllables on average from our reference value, and we are losing quite a lot of predictive power at an R of 0.15. So my first conclusion here is that for counting syllables, it seems more reliable to use an ASR-based count than a purely signal-based count. Let's look at pruning now. The problem with pruning is that we know from previous studies that it matters, but I've not seen so much discussion about how concretely it is operationalized. So here we compared different pruning strategies in how much they improved consistency and predictive power when applied to the syllables count. You can see on the right the direct correlation between number of syllables and vocabulary size and the indirect impact on the correlation with speech rate based on this pruning strategy. Even leaving it unpruned, we already have a satisfying speech rate. The first thing we did for pruning was to remove all the disfluencies. We re removed uh, field pauses, repetitions, self-corrections, and what I called meta-talk, in this case, um, the learner talking to himself or reading the question out loud. 
With this pruning, we kept only what the learner meant to say. This meant pruning uh, reduces a little bit the variance, it increases the internal consistency, and it improves quite a lot the predictive power, especially the direct correlation of the number of syllables. Then we went one step further, and we removed also all the L1 words or the foreign words, so all the words that the learner said in their first language, in Dutch or in English, usually because they didn't know the word in the target language. By removing those words, we improve a little bit further the predictive power of this metric. And finally, we went one step further and we removed all the proper nouns. Not, not of course, because those proper nouns are wrong, but rather than rather because they do not uh, say anything about the L2 skills of the learner. So by removing them, again, we, again, we reduce variance and increase predictive power. All this confirms that pruning definitely improves the meaningfulness and the predictive power of length-based metrics. In particular, composite metrics involving the number of syllables. And it seems that the harsher the pruning, the better. <laughs> What about composite fluency metrics now? Which one is the best predictor of L2 proficiency? Well, in our study, it's length of runs, fully pruned length of runs. We reach a correlation coefficient of 0.63, which is really quite high, even though, as you can see in the graph, we had many students with low vocabulary size score, probably because the test was a bit more challenging than intended, or because they had a slightly lower level than expected, but you can see a very, very clear correlation trend here between length of runs and vocabulary size. What are the other metrics in order of predictive power? Well, speech rate is just below length of runs. Note that all the metrics are based on the pruned number of syllables. Below, we have articulation rate. Now, some authors, like Nivia de Jong, would say that articulation rate should be more predictive, more interesting than speech rate, because it discounts the silent pauses. So one of the reasons which could explain this slightly lower correlation is that the phonation time computed automatically here is probably not as good as what we have to compute speech rate. And we had no option to compute it manually. So maybe with a more reliable phonation time calculation, maybe articulation rate could be higher. Syllable duration is a bit lower, which is exactly the inverse of our articulation rate, so all this makes sense. And interestingly, the pruned number of syllables is equally predictive. Now, this might be due to our speaking test design, which with short answers and limited time, but still, it shows how a very basic metric can already be of use, for instance, in language learning applications where you have to compute a very quick estimate of proficiency. Number of words is just below. It's still, it's just still better to use syllables, but you can see that the difference is limited. Then we have the silent pausing rate inversed, the duration of runs, the same as the phonation runs, and the speech time ratio. And then finally, the inverse of the pause duration, which is already much less related to proficiency. What about fully automated versions of these same composite metrics. How do they perform in comparison with our manually revised and pruned gold standard metrics? Remember that the pruning requires manual annotation, so the first difference is that the fully automated metrics are unpruned. But as you can see, the correlation we get from the metrics based on the unpruned automated speech recognition transcript are quite close to our gold standard. We lost between 0 0.02 and 0 0.04 in the correlation coefficient, so really not bad at all. It's totally conceivable for these first three metrics here, length of run, speech rate, and articulation rate, to skip the manual revision and pruning annotation if you need a quick, fully automated metric. If we're bringing the signal-based metrics obtained with the syllable nuclei Prat script, we lose more predictive power, about 0.15, but they are still valid, of course. Looking at other metrics, the differences get sometimes bigger, but the signal-based syllable duration metrics perform as well as the manually revised one. In general, my recommendation for fully automated metrics would be to use the state-of-the-art uh, ASR transcription services to then compute the number of syllables and to use the syllables nuclei Prat script for silent pauses and uh, phonation time computation. 
Now, what about developmental sensitivity? How much learning gains can we observe with these metrics in an extremely short intervention? Can three sessions over two weeks produce visible change? Actually, the answer is yes. We observe a very significant pre-post effect on at least four of these metrics. The p-values here are well below 0.001. Look at speech rate on the left, right? We have even here a medium effect size here of half a standard deviation. That's comparable to some of the effects that Segalowitz was observing from a five weeks immersion on other metrics. Articulation rate, syllable duration, and length of runs, all four have totally demonstrated that they can measure an extremely short-term change consistently across learners. The effect size gets smaller, yes, which is expected considering the experimental duration, but they are still very significant. Other metrics, such as the duration of runs, are not perceiving any significant change here. That's the case for the other composite metrics that I didn't include in the graph to keep it readable. And also, uh, it's the case for the number of syllables. No changes there. But the four metrics that you see on the left are really interesting and really sensitive to short-term fluency development. Now, one caveat, though, is that a big part of the effect that you can see here is not necessarily a learning gain in itself, but it's but part of it is, is simply a task repetition effect. The fact the pre-test and the post-test are the same and only three weeks apart makes it so that, of course, students would have improved. You can see here that the control group, which was taking his normal French classes as usual, also improved significantly, although with a smaller effect size. The difference in improvement with the control group is not significant here. Again, that had to be expected in this time frame, but I don't think it removes any value to the sensitivity of those metrics. It just says that the intervention was not enough to make a difference with business as usual. Uh, so in the end, what can we conclude from all this? Well, the first thing is that automated metrics work. They definitely are reliable, they are accurate, and they have predictive power. The difference between the manual prune transcript and the automated transcript that we get from ASR does not produce a very strong difference. It's only slightly less accurate and the predictive power we lose from it um, is at maximum an R of 0.04, so minimum. Second, we saw that ASR-based count of syllables is actually more reliable than the, syllable based, uh, the signal based syllable count from the Prat script. Um, the difference here is stronger at about 0.15 in predictive power. So my recommendation to you would be to compute the number of syllables on that ASR transcript rather than using a purely signal-based detection of nuclei, except for languages that don't have uh, very reliable ASR uh, services. The third thing we saw is that harsh pruning improved predictive power, and so it's definitely something to do if you want to predict proficiency or visualize change. In our study, the best predictor of L2 proficiency was the pruned length of runs, directly followed by the speech rate and the articulation rate. And then if you want the best developmental sensitivity, it's the speech rate followed by the articulation rate and the syllable duration. They are able to detect even very, very short-term developments. And I think this has strong implications for language learning apps and research efforts measuring fluency. So this has been our presentation. I hope it has been interesting for all of you and I'm really interested myself in your questions but also your feedback and your suggestions, including critical feedback. Everything is warmly welcomed. I hope to meet you in the symposium and to be able to discuss it there uh, with you. But also feel free to write me an email or to get on my website. You can download the slides. You can check the references and the details. And if you need the R script I used to compute the metrics, feel free to email me. Thank you so much for your time and attention and see you later at ILA. Enjoy the conference.